So in this video, I wanna to talk to you guys about niches and products that are currently doing really, really well given the current situation. One thing I would like to say as well is that times like this, then it's all about adapting as small business owners. And when I say small, I'm talking anyway under kind of like 100 million, um, then we don't have the power or the influence to change people's buying moods, change the markets and change people's behaviors. Whereas people like Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Pandemics, do have the power to do that. So our best chance of of survival during times like this is to adapt. And when I say adapt, I mean mainly being e-commerce businesses than the products that we sell. This is also where it comes in handy having a general store. People give general stores a lot of hate, but in comparison to any other store where it's one product and niche, etc., then it offers that freedom and that flexibility to test pretty much as many products as you would like um, until you find one that sticks, one that finds does really well, and then you can progress it from there. Before we get into the bulk of the video then, I just wanna quickly say, uh, make sure you check out my previous two videos where we discuss kind of like the main issues that are currently arising. One of them being shipping issues, and that was nearly a week old, that video, and a lot has progressed or a lot has changed from then. Now, going back to adapting, a lot of people, you'll watch a lot of other videos, a lot of posts on Facebook saying that the issues now with China, once the product leaves the factory, that is where the issues lie. So it's the whole delivery process from factory to a customer's door. However, again, it's all about adapting, finding other shipping methods that are currently working. And to the UK, there are quite a few that are pretty much operating as normal, if not better than ePacket. One of them is Special Line. Um, and the other one as well, which I actually heard about today, um, speaking to a friend was called YDH. He sent me a screenshot of some of his orders, which I'll share with you now. Um, and you can see during March, he was able to get his products delivered from China to the UK, to his customer's front door on average in about 10 days, which is pretty impressive given the current situation. So there will be more developments and more videos coming on logistics. That being said then, the topic of this video is indeed niches and products that are currently doing really well given the current climate. When it comes to e-commerce, then one of the biggest mistakes I see people making is instead of looking at a product from their customer's mind, they try and picture it themselves and think, would I buy this product when that is not really the right approach to have? Because there's been products I've looked at on AliExpress and thought they've been really good, but they've just completely tanked and lost me loads of money. And then there's been weird and wonderful products that I've seen and thought they're just absolute um, pieces of cheap crap that nobody will buy. And again, they've done really well. So what I'm trying to say is make sure you look at things from your customer's point of view, and this is more appropriate now than it ever has been. So given the current climate here in the UK, people are obviously confined to their own homes for most of the day. Most people aren't working, the schools are closed, therefore their kids are at home. So you have to put yourself in your customer's mind and think about the kind of things that they will want to be spending their money on or will be spending their money on. Given that people are spending more time at home, people are gonna be bored for longer and that, in my opinion, translates into more time spent on social media. So the current climate at, the, at now, right now, is that more and more people are spending more and more time on social media and as the days go on there's less and less advertisers on social media because people have the approach that if they don't adapt they would rather just pause their stores and switch off altogether so they'll stop spending money on ads altogether and Facebook ads being a bad bidding platform means that the less people there are bidding for those impressions um, then the cheaper they become which translates into cheaper CPMs which I've um, documented in previous videos. So essentially what that means then is that you can advertise on Facebook for cheaper than ever because there's less advertisers and people are spending more time on it. So as long as you start selling products in the right spaces then you're going to do really really well. Going back to putting yourself in your customer's shoes then with people being stuck at home thinking about what they're going to be doing. Think about the kind of activities, hobbies um, that people are going to be learning or spending their time doing now that they're stuck at home one of those things being in the dog niche myself is walking their dog obviously that's one of the only reasons in which people are actually given permission to leave the house which is to walk their dog this is also translated into the trend data if we have a look at the dog walk interest over time we can see that since February is absolutely skyrocketed to the most popular it ever has been since March 2020. There's going to be more people spending more time walking their dogs because they have they don't really have time to do anything else. They can't leave the house and go to the shopping as they normally would. They can't go out for lunch. They can't go to the cinema. They can't do so many things. So there's going to be a lot of dogs getting a lot of walks out there, which means more and more people are going to be spending money within this niche. Think about the other things as well. If people have more time to spend with their dogs, they're going to be training them more. So look at training toys. Um, 
um, look at certain products that are involved with dog walking how does somebody physically get their dog to the place in which they're going to walk it they'll take it in the car so are there certain products um, that help somebody with that if they're taking their dog for a walk somewhere and their dog gets wet given the current time of year then are there certain products to help them clean their dog before they go back in the car certain products to help them protect their car certain products to help them find their dog if their dog gets lost there's just countless opportunities in certain niches and certain products um, if you put yourself in your customer's mind and start looking in the right places. The other space within the dog niche that's also doing really well is dog toys. Obviously, if people are spending more time at home, their dog is gonna be pestering them to play with them. They're gonna go through more toys or it's just something to keep themselves from not being bored. So again, look at dog toys, certain dog toys. If you can combine things as well into one thing, like the more kind of problems a product solves, the more valuable it becomes. So think of, dog toys that can be used on a dog walk and can be used for dog training as well. It also gives you three different kind of um, pathways to bring it to market, three different kind of angles or approaches you can have when you're trying to market it, advertise it and try and sell that particular product. The next place as well is obviously home workouts. I mentioned this briefly in my previous video, but again, if we look at the Google trending data, we can also see that the interest over time for the home workout search has just, it's gone absolutely ridiculous. You can see here that it's the most popular it ever has been um, in the UK for over 16 years, and it is miles above even at the most popular points, which were typically kind of at the beginning of the year. Now, this isn't to say you should just focus on home workout products. There are countless things out there like ab rollers, exercise bands. Um, I think what would really work well here is if you do kind of like a um, a home workout bundle like a level one and then as somebody progresses through that and gets stronger um, they could have a level two that they then have to buy into or perhaps you're involved in that niche yourself and you can write home workout pro um, home workout training plans for people nutrition plans uh, things like that I think are going to absolutely kill it um, certainly for the next few weeks if not a few months I think this should, should also be translated into just a general overall um, self-health when i was training to get my personal training qualification um, given it was a few years ago um, but there were certain studies we had to research and um, look into and we had to learn kind of like the different excuses people gave just to make sure we had an answer to them should anyone bring those up with us and the number one reason that people gave of why they didn't work out why they didn't spend more time or more money on their nutrition was because they didn't have the time and that can't be somebody's excuse or won't be the case at least for the next few weeks because people will have nothing but time on their hands to dedicate to different things and one of those things will be their general health so think certain products that can help them get a better posture um, or become more flexible or again it, in terms of digital products it could be some sort of easy at home cookbook which kind of leads me on to my next niche as well um, which is cooking people are at home nowadays again given the fact that they've got loads of time in their hands they're going to be spending some more time doing cooking and when it comes to the cooking niches the kitchen niches there's just countless different gadgets that are in a really good kind of price zone to consider them as impulse buys um, out there on aliexpress that you can go and find get on your store and start running some ads for straight away again kind of like one of the biggest mistakes i see people um, making especially when it comes to selling what people call saturated saturated products personally i don't really like that term because i don't believe in it um, but there's certain things you can do to make your products less saturated or to at least make it more appealing um, over somebody else selling that exact same product. And when it comes to selling in the kitchen niche, then one of those things you could do, um, you can go out there, buy a license to a digital product, a cookbook for about £50, and everybody who buys your kitchen product also gets a complimentary um, ebook like with like X amount of different recipes in. And it's just one of those kind of USPs or added bonuses um, that, when people see your product versus somebody else's it makes them want to buy yours because they get that added value which essentially is going to cost you nothing with that being said the guys i'm going to finish off with one last niche um, which is probably one of the biggest ones and one of the most current ones too because it is a new announcement in the uk that schools are closing um, for the foreseeable future kids are going to be spending time at home not necessarily getting the full kind of education they would be normally so that niche of home education slash kind of toys or educational toys for kids i think is going to absolutely explode over the next few weeks um, if we take a look at a few different examples then on aliexpress we can see that there's just a whole range and variety of different toys from light up um, 
like different pens etc different puzzles um, there's just loads and loads of different products that you could use and bring to market I mean in theory you could put maybe 20 of these different products on there um, put out a carousel ad make sure the links um, link up correctly and then you'll be able to see exactly which one's getting the most traction which one's getting the sales and then that gives you kind of like a focus um, to divert and focus all of your time on what's also good about this selection of toys as well if we look at the price brackets is number one they fall under kind of like that tax and VAT threshold of 15 pounds if you are importing to the UK and that also makes them kind of cheap enough to fall in that bracket of being considered as an impulse buy purchase obviously the more expensive your product is the more thought and consideration um, somebody is going to have to give that before they commit to buying it but with cheap products of anywhere kind of under 30 pounds um, as, long, as long as they look really good then most people have no issues um, with committing to spending that sort of money especially if you um, offer PayPal as a payment method the also the other good thing as well is the fact that these are all unbranded so it leaves an opportunity there for you to name it whatever you like which then makes it more difficult for your customer to find that exact same product elsewhere on the internet which again just does a better job of making sure that people purchase that product from you um, versus somebody else and with that being said the guys I'm gonna wrap the video up there um, I want to try and make these short sharp as informative as possible um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video if you did please do make sure you let me know by hitting that like button any comments or questions or worries during the current period make sure you let me know just comment it down below um, and I will get back to every single person and finally now is a great opportunity if you ask me to start an e-commerce business so if you are looking for a step-by-step -step course and um, that comes along with somebody's full guidance and support as well then make sure you check out my e-com academy there will be a link in the video description below that being said thanks again for watching I hope you enjoyed it and uh, see you in the next one